to Shred Guitar in the 80s. Today's going to be a fun day. We're going to look back at 1986, actually March of 1986, and we're going to see what was going on in the world of hard rock and heavy metal guitar back then, in the world of Shred. And we're also going to look at the harmonic minor scale, and I'm going to show you some patterns that I like to play, some fingerings and things like that, and how I connect them together. So let's get started. <laughs> patterns in the E harmonic minor scale. Um, if we just start at the 12th position on the E note, this is a nice pattern to play. That's probably the most common fingering for the harmonic minor scale. You got 12, 14, 15 on the 6th and 5th strings, and then 13, 14 on the 4th string, then 11, 12, 14 on the 3rd, 12, 13 on the second, 2, 11, 12, 14, 15 on the first. Now, when I learned these patterns, I kind of practiced them to where my fingering would be like 11, 12, 14 on the third string. Kind of double that note and play 10, 12, 13 on the second string. And I do this because I want to be able to weave in and out of the patterns. And I find it really effective to practice them this way, like... And then you also want to find out where that minor third interval is, because you get a lot of nice phrases from that. So, from here... It's really nice to play that phrase, like 10, 13, slide down to 9. diminished arpeggio another really nice area to play it's one that Ingve does where you could go like really nice area to phrase in there would be endings to your licks. Um, if you can always end your lines with a really nice phrase, you can pretty much create really melodic solos off the cuff. The more endings you know, the better, if that makes sense, with your lines. And this area in here is really nice also. That 16, 17 on the third and second string. And then you could jump up and play that 1920 on the second string. Another real nice area to phrase would be here. This is probably the most common shape. You'll go 7, 8, 11 on the sixth string. 7, 9, 10 on the 5th and the 4th. You're going to go 8, 9 on the 3rd. And 7, 8, 10 on the 2nd. 7, 8, 11, 12 on the 1st. out 
of all of them creating nice melodies coming up through a little phrase. I'm sort of phrasing off the quarter note. <laughs> Right about there, so you can also create some nice legato melodies by playing like the 8, 10, 12 area on the second string to the 11 on the third string. You know, you can jump in with that 8, 11, 12. It's nice to phrase off that diminished arpeggio. We're going 10, 13 on the second string to 11, 14 on the first. You can throw the 12 in the first string. And for me, I learn the patterns up and down one string. And that's really important for my playing to keep the notes going. Um, when I'm improvising, I want to be able to go up and down, across, however, um, and just keep the lines going and always hit the right notes. I don't want to hit bad notes. So I just spend a lot of time just visualizing the neck and when I'm playing I'm just seeing all those possibilities and I know how they're going to sound. I know how the intervals are going to sound. So I went to the newsstand one day in March of 1986 looking for a cool guitar magazine. I needed some information. And I was just obsessed with the guitar magazines, the music magazines back then. And then I saw this. On the cover was Ingve Malmsteen and Billy Sheehan of Talus. At the time, he was with Talus. I first became aware of Billy Sheehan and Talus from an article in Record Review magazine by the writer John Sutherland. And he was a great writer. He used to cover all the acts I wanted to know about, from Michael Schenker, Iron Maiden, to Sound Barrier, and he covered Talus. So I went out and bought the Talus cassette and was just blown away by the bass solo on it. I just I couldn't believe how amazing he was as a bass player. And even though I play guitar, I would just drive around in my car and just listen to that cassette over and over and over, especially the bass solo. So it was really cool to see him and Ingve on the cover. And I think this is around the period that uh, Billy Sheehan just joined Dave Lee Roth. I'm not sure if it was out of the bag yet, so to speak. And it's really cool. They had a reader's poll. And the winners of that were like the guitar single of the year was knocking at your back door. The guitar in the 90s, they called, I guess, the best rock guitarist guitar in the 90s was Yngwie Malmsteen. Most valuable player, Jimmy Page, who was probably doing something with the firm at that time. Metal God in Waitings, what they called their upcoming talent. Uh, Vinnie Moore would win that. And Wolf Hoffman from Accept won this one. Down and Dirtiest, I guess that would be their blues category. Steve Ray Vaughan won. Rookie of the Year was Queensryche. Guitar Album of the Year was Rising Force, Yngwie Malmsteen. And comeback of the year is Jimmy Page, so pretty amazing. And then they had double play combination, and I guess that was for a twin guitarist in a band. And guys from Iron Maiden won, Adrian Smith and Dave Murray, who I, I really love. So it was pretty neat. I mean, what a year for guitar. You had Deep Purple's comeback. In fact, they have a really cool article on Deep Purple's comeback here with Richie Blackmore with a really cool photo. This little musical appreciation is really cool. They talk about the album and kind of outline some of the different songs and give examples, some excerpts of solos that he did and talk about the scales he used and some of the rhythmic ideas. Just a really cool, I mean, it was amazing to go to the newsstand and just, I couldn't wait. I devoured every issue and learned every single thing I could and every single transcription. They also had this really cool section called In the Listening Room. And in this issue, it was Steve Ray Vaughn, the amazing Steve Ray Vaughn. And in the listening room was basically they'd play a few songs for someone and they'd get their opinion on them, get their opinion on the guitar player they were playing for them. In this case, uh, he actually played him Ingbe Malmsteen's Marching Out from the Marching Out album and CV said he's obviously an incredible technical player. It's a different cup of tea than I would normally listen to and it's obviously done well and it does have a lot of emotion. 
So, Steve Ray Vaughn gave a little praise for Inve there, which is kind of cool. I mean, it was just an amazing time. Giants walked the earth back then. It was amazing. In this issue, they did a transcription of Black Star, which was just amazing. I went home and devoured that and just, you know, tried to play it the best I could. At the time, I just kind of followed Wolf's transcriptions, and I would kind of alter them some, but... And I was alternate picking everything, so it was a bit of a disaster to play some of those Ingve lines alternate picked. But it was just a lot of fun, and the harmonic ideas like we're doing today, the harmonic minor ideas, were definitely stemmed from the Black Star song, because E harmonic minor is basically what he's using in that. And then you have the Ingve Moms team Billy Sheehan interview, the cover of Cool Photo, them playing together. And this would have been 86, so Ingve was getting ready to record Trilogy, and I think Ingve and Billy were on tour together, Talos and Rising Force, in the summer of 85, if I'm not mistaken, for the Marching Out tour. And I think they might have had Wasp on the bill also. But overall, just a really cool time capsule of that time, that era. Just uh, Guitar for the Practicing Musician was one of my favorites. I really looked forward to every issue. For one, they had transcriptions, and number two, it was just they covered the artist I wanted to know about. Really, all three guitar magazines were brilliant. Guitar Player, Guitar World, and Guitar for the Practicing Musician. Guitar Player and Guitar World are still going, but uh, sadly, Guitar for the Practicing Musician folded sometime around 2000, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. So, pretty cool. Yngwie Momsi and Billy Sheehan on the cover. Well, thanks a lot for hanging out with me. Um, if you haven't and you would like to, like and subscribe to my channel. I'd really appreciate that. And to everyone that has, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It's just amazing, all your comments and everything. I'm really enjoying this. I plan on doing it for a long time and covering a lot of players. It's just a real blast for me. So thanks a lot for hanging out and have fun picking.